Hello, all of you wonderful friends. I just realized there's quite an echo in this room. We are starting our Instagram Live today. We are actually in Curitiba, Brazil. And we're having such a fantastic time. As we start, if we can, as always, I'd love to know where you are, where you're writing from. And I apologize for this echo. We found the best room that we could. We're actually in Iguazu Falls and we are, are so excited to have everyone be with us today. I think we have people from various places. We've had such a great time all over the world, um, but just, just this last week we have spent time with um, members of the church in the southern part of Brazil. So we've had a, a fantastic time here. We are getting Elaine Dalton. She's going to be joining us again. So we're looking forward to having her join us too. So we'll give her a, just a couple minutes to get on here. Maybe as, as we are waiting, if you could say where you're joining us from, of course, that would be fantastic. Um, I'm, I'm actually really surprised at how well the internet works here in Brazil. The last time I was here, oh, I see somebody from Curitiba. Oh, that's great. The last time I was here for, in Curitiba, um, we did not have um, nearly as many abilities. So it's so great that this is working here. It's amazing how how this beautiful country of Brazil has grown and the members of the church have just increased. Well, hello, Elaine. Hello. How are you? I'm so happy. I'm so excited to see you. I'm, I'm, I'm amazed that this is working from Brazil. Oh, aren't we so blessed? Uh, this, is, <laughs> this is incredible. It's incredible. It is incredible. It's incredible to see you. I mean, how are you doing, friend? I'm doing doing well and we've all been watching you we saw you with the young adult women i think it was in brazil and just you're having the time of your life aren't you well you know i am I, you we, you know you get these assignments and these requests to go and speak you know better than anyone and i received this request to to go to uh florianopolis brazil to speak at a conference and while speaking at this conference um i also was able to speak at an education conference and at a stake fireside and at a ward at church so it's it's actually been amazing to be here elaine i'm concerned that my internet may not be working as well is it oh, working it, okay i keep seeing a little circle it is it is for me i hope it is for everyone else i can see you perfectly and hear you okay so elaine if for some reason the internet stops working here in brazil as well I'm just giving it to you to take over as I know you can. So just keep going without me and I'll do my best to make sure that, that I'm joining in as much as I can. Okay, sounds great. Sounds great. Okay. Well, Barbara, well, don't you think this is an amazing time? I, yes, oh my goodness. Today I went to church and I just had, I had this feeling all morning and then I realized there's something just happening and it was the youth were bearing testimony of Jesus Christ every hour, all day long, all over the world. And I just thought these are days never to be forgotten, just like Oliver Cowdery said. Elaine, I can't agree more. And in all honesty, <laughs> I was, you know, I was planning on just being with Dustin and visiting ward members in Brazil yesterday. And the stake president uh, in, in one of those stakes in Curitiba asked me to speak after President Nelson and Emily Bell Freeman. And, and while I was getting prepared to speak, I just thought, you know, I'm gonna text Emily really fast, Sister Freeman, really fast, President Freeman, and just let her know that we are in Curitiba, Brazil, and just simply say, would you, you know, here, I, I actually recorded the first testimony that was born in Curitiba and sent it to her for the young women. And then she so kindly responded back and sent a message for the youth in Curitiba, Brazil, that I was able to read to them. And it was, the spirit was so strong as these young adults, these youth bore their testimony one after the other of Jesus Christ and their belief in him and the prophets and the gospel, but the focus was on the savior, as you know. It, it was so powerful yesterday. You, and I feel like you're right. I mean, it was like all day long, we felt this amazing spirit. And, and then the recognition that these youth all over the world, in Africa, in Utah, in Oregon, in Brazil, in, you know, in, in China, in, 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 in Japan, in, 
in Switzerland and England. I mean, everywhere. I mean, everywhere. I wish I could name every country in the world. And they were just bearing testimony one after the other of Jesus Christ. And my experience, Elaine, they were strong, solid testimonies. It was amazing. Well, well, my experience was that I could feel that I could feel there was a different feeling yesterday. Now, my granddaughter had her missionary farewell, and that was incredible. These strong kids that get up and just bear these powerful testimonies. And then the whole ward where I was, all the youth got up and sang about the Savior. And I'm not kidding you. I, I am so grateful to be alive and be living in these times when things are happening like this that that are just preparatory i think oh absolutely and you know what on on saturday no friday elder christopherson was actually at one of the meetings as well and this is just speaking to brazil but you know the members have grown so there's so many more members here in brazil now and it was so interesting. I, I thought he would say, like, wow, isn't it amazing that we have all these members in Brazil and, and the church is growing and you're so strong. But instead, he said, I just want you to know that this is just, just the beginning. The, the, the membership in Brazil is going to grow and expand. And he basically, his wife just said, if you cut off the top, then you're starting to see what, what's going to be happening in, in Brazil. And I think it's not just Brazil. It's all over the world. I think sometimes we sometimes we think that you know the church has grown so much and we're getting so strong and we're firmly grounded in the gospel of Jesus Christ and all that, but we're still at the at the child phase. As President Nelson says, we are we still need to be eating our vitamins and and, and getting our sleep because we're just at the beginning of how much this church and this gospel is growing. I and mean, these youth are incredible. I mean, they, yeah. these are the future leaders of the church, and you listen to their testimonies, and oh my goodness. Some of these testimonies that were all of the testimonies, but some of these testimonies born yesterday that I that I listened to myself, I was blown out of the water. So strong, so devoted, so clear, so faithful, and frankly, many of them so simple. Just they just know that Jesus is the Christ. It was just powerful to listen to that testimony. I agree. So all you moms that were we're all gathered here this morning, you just hug your kids. And you say a little prayer for them when we hang out. They're facing a lot in this world, but they are maintaining their strength. That I think they were born with this testimony of Jesus oh, Christ. Some of them. I, so I, and dad, I totally. dads, you can hug your kids too. Just these are um, these are valiant youth. Every single one, even if you're having a little struggle with a few, you just love your kids because they are all extremely valiant and vital. I think at this time. And you know, Elaine, I'll, I'll just keep adding to that. And all of you that, that recognizing President Nelson's definition of mothers, that, we, that you hug your nieces and your nephews and the students that you teach and your neighbors next door and all these kids that are working so hard to be strong in this church. I mean, Elaine, you, since, since you brought that up, maybe we can go to, go to Elder, maybe a little bit off, but not quite chronologically correct, but Elder Godoy's talk. I mean, because we're in Brazil, oh, yeah. I just, you know, I can't, I can't help it, but he is Brazilian, and we just read this talk looking for the doctrines and principles and applications and policies and things. And that's one of the things that he talks about. He talks about how, you know, there are two different groups that he's speaking to, and in, in, this is paragraph number 11 in these talks that we have. And he says, the first one is those who have fallen away from the restored gospel of Jesus Christ. And the second one is those who are not being as faithful to their covenants as they should be. But I, and, I, and I love that we're saying that there's so many struggles, but goodness, again, the answer to both of those groups of people is still Jesus Christ. And in number 15 in this paragraph, again, a principle of the gospel is, as we know, he says, anything broken can be mended through Jesus Christ. And uh -huh. And I think that's the doctrine as well that we see in both of these topics is Jesus Christ, the Godhead, or the atonement of Jesus Christ. What do you think? I absolutely agree. In fact, both, yeah, both the talks, that's, that's what the doctrine is. And they teach so many principles to support that or the guide, to guide us. They, it, it, it was so full, I just have marks all over in my margins. Um, I so related to Elder Godoy. Yeah, getting in a taxi cab or you get on a plane and you're just exhausted and you say, I, I say to myself, I hope I don't sit by a talker, you know, <laughs> and, and yet, and yet that's always when it happens. And as Elder Godoy said, I knew that my, my rest was over. 
you just have to share the the good news the gospel of jesus christ and what I don't think any of us realize what happens when we do. I don't think the youth realize what happened yesterday. Yeah, I agree. Um, and, and I think we'll, we'll see all that, you know, at some point. But I love that talk. You know, Elaine, on a, on a personal note just this week, and, and for all of those from Brazil, I hope you understand that I say this with all of the love and humility in the world. You know, I was coming to Brazil to speak twice one time at a, at a conference called Grupo Roble. It's an education conference where they're empowering young adults throughout all of South America. It's fantastic. I've spoken here for a number of years. And then the other talk was to be at a 10 stake fireside the next night um, and trying to empower the youth in Brazil to become more educated. But while I was speaking at the second night, or actually the first day, I received a message from the bishop in another city four hours away asking me to speak and my husband to speak at their ward for church. And so, you know, of course I thought, oh, I'm so tired. I already have two talks. I'm gonna be getting to bed at midnight. Is there any way I can really wake up, drive over there and speak in the morning? But of course the spirit says, yes, of course you can. Like, isn't that what you do? You're supposed to speak and share the gospel. But like, but like Elder Godoy, I was so tired and I just wanted <laughs> if I to sleep a little bit. But then, as the, the next day as I was speaking, the state president asked me if I would then speak at the youth fire side. So it was, instead of being the two talks, it ended up being five talks, you know, that I gave in those four days with my husband. But what I found was so amazing is, just like with Elder Godoy, when you really are putting the Lord first, he will give you the energy that you need to fulfill the assignments that the spirit confirms that you should take upon yourself. And even though I was exhausted, I did feel that energy and that almost a mantle that came upon me as I was able to speak. But more importantly, I was the one who was getting all the blessings. I, I, I was the one listening to the youth testimonies that I hadn't planned on listening to. I was the one who was able to watch my husband bear his testimony in Portuguese to, a, to the Brazilians whom he's served his mission with. I, I, I was the one who was able to listen to all these youth and look into their eyes and have the spirit confirm to me of God's love for them. I, I, as you know, I was the one, and I, and I hate to say this in some ways, but I was the, I'm leaving more blessed than I ever could have because, as Elder Godoy says, he knew that he was on the Lord's errand, and it's not a coincidence. And, and when we're on the Lord's errand, the Lord will use us in any way we can. And sometimes, yes, it is, it is exhausting. But at the same time, gosh, when you, put, when you put the Lord first, the Lord will put people into your place so that you can be blessed as well as others. We're, we're, we're giving both ways. Uh, absolutely. And there's the doctrine right there, the atonement of Jesus Christ and the enabling power. And I can testify of that because in my calling, you know, I, I was enabled like you were uh, and are uh, to do things I physically couldn't have done yeah. if I hadn't drawn on that power. So, yes, absolutely. And, and Elaine, on that that same talk, the same talk by President, by Elder Godoy. I hope we see our listeners, I hope we're understanding that Elaine and I are intentionally, we're talking and telling stories, but we're also intentionally talking doctrines and principles and applications as we go through this. So we've talked about the atonement of Jesus Christ being the main doctrine. And I just want to share another principle that we have there from, from Elder Godoy in this talk is the importance of staying on the covenant path. He says, if you stepped off the path, May I invite you with all of the hope in my heart to please come back. Whatever your concerns, whatever your challenges, there is a place for you in this, the Lord's church. You and generations yet unborn will be blessed by your actions now to return to the covenant path. I just, I just saw Elaine, one of our sisters, who was actually, it looks like she was at the fireside last night that, that I was speaking at. She says, I'm so grateful for your message there. And it was a balm for me and my sister, sister, um, who don't have the hope, who, who I'm not sure if this says exactly, get, to get, have the hope of eternal marriage, even with struggles we have. And that's the reality, regardless of the struggle we have, whether we're married or whether we're not married, the balm is in the covenants we make with Jesus Christ. He is the balm. He is the one who saves us. And that's a principle of the gospel. The atonement of Jesus Christ is the doctrine. The principle is we can depend on Jesus Christ to save us and to heal us, even in the most difficult times. That's true. And so if you have anybody that's questioning, again, go in your mind, study these conference talks, identify the doctrine, 
ask in your mind what doctrine does this person not understand that if they did understand would change their attitude or the, their behavior and and so we're this is soaking into us i have to say and what i think is that the spirit will just enlighten us at the very moment we need it i've experienced that before and i feel like to this morning especially that the spirit is connecting us all over the world. We are connected through technology, but even more through the spirit. So everyone, pay attention to what you're feeling right now and what you're feeling when you read these talks, because I've gone through them several times this week. I've listened to them while I've been walking and, and, uh, and, and then studied them on, in a hard copy. And every single time I learn something different, every single day I learn something different. And I'm, I'm getting so I can put them together. They, they almost dovetail, like Elder Godoy's really fits with, the, with Elder Dane's talk. He talks about covenants. He says covenants are what? A, like a loving embrace yes. from the Lord. And so it's, it's, it's quite amazing what the Spirit can teach us as we do it this way. You know, it, it's so true, Elaine. And, you know, as I was... You're, we're kind of going back and forth between these two talks because we are re reading these two talks this week. But that idea of, I'm going to jump back to Elder Godoy real quick, where he says, when we're talking about decisions, and Elaine, you talked about how you've read these talks. One of the things that I was inspired to say every single time I spoke this was I Im invited the young adults and the youth and the members of the wards and stakes to write down their feelings and to write down their thoughts and to write down their impressions. And of course, I brought out, I showed them just because I had them with me in my backpack because I, you know, I'm traveling. So I showed them my prayer journal. I showed them my thought journal. I showed them my kind of my journal that I just keep when I'm traveling. And, and I just realized, you know, there's a, there's a great principle that, that, that we understand that President, that Elder Scott teaches. And he says, if you want to receive revelation, we need to pay attention to what we hear and what we see and what we feel. And then we need to write those things down and make sure we do them. And I, and I recognize just as you're, as you're walking, sometimes you don't have something to write on, but we need to remember and we need to, if we can, when we can, to remember and write down the, the gospel principles and the truths and the guidance and the inspiration that God is giving to us so that we then can see, as you're talking about with Elder Dave, we can see the face of God, see the face of Jesus Christ. If we go back and actually look at the reviews, look at what we've written down, we will see God in our lives because he will show himself to us as we are writing down and reflecting upon what he has taught us. Absolutely. I, I couldn't agree more you know i have i have just one journal i take notes when i'm somewhere but what people don't know is they think i'm just writing really you know all, every every word they say yeah most of the time when i'm writing really fast i'm writing down what the spirit is teaching me and exactly. nothing to do with what they say it's just where two or three are gathered there i will be also and i put boxes around those things and then I go back through them and I act on, I try to act on every one of the things that I was taught by the Spirit. And that has helped me so much. Actually, when I'm listening to them when I'm walking, that gives me impetus to run home so I can hurry and write everything down. Yeah. Well, Elaine, somebody's asking if we can post that quote from Elder Scott. I will do that. Thank oh, you yeah. Definitely. And we have other talks. That we're going to be posting as well. well we'll still gather all those together and post talks and quotes but i'll post that one by elder scott it is i used to every time i used to teach seminar i used to teach that i i will learn by what i hear by what i see by what i feel i will write it down and i will do them right and, and he says that if he he taught if you write it down the spirit recognizes you're paying attention and then you will receive more and more personal revelation <laughs> so it's awesome Elaine, I love talking to you about these things because we are we are so often on the same mind and you're so smart and so bright and you've done this so many times, which I just love. You know, I, I it's it's this he, President Elder Elder Scott gives another talk, which is also what you're talking about, where he's in Mexico and he says in Mexico that he asks the Lord, is there anything more? And then the Lord gives him more, and so he writes down more, and then the Lord he says, Is there anything more? And the Lord gives him more, and so he goes and writes down. But if he doesn't write it down and he doesn't show the Lord that he's ready, then the Lord often won't give us those revelations and those insights in the first place. That sounds a little bit cheesy to some, but honestly, I don't go, I, very rarely do I go anywhere without a phone or without a piece of paper or something, write down notes that the Spirit is guiding me with. Because, 
because I'm, I'm not ready. I'm not ready to receive the revelation if I can't write it down. So I'm the That's, same way. I box it, but I, I put little stars by it. When I know it's coming from the Lord, or just, you can go through my journals. If you see a star, that means I believe the Lord is speaking or the Spirit is speaking in some way. Well, see, and I put stars by the squares <laughs> after I've done what the Spirit told me to do. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that takes the whole okay. thing. That's good. Um, Elaine, there's another part of this Elder Godoy, another principle that I'd like to share that comes from Elder, Elder Oaks. And he says this, he says, the restored gospel of Jesus Christ encourages us to think about the future. It teaches great ideas about the future to guide our actions today. In contrast, we all know persons who are concerned only with the present. Spend it today and, it today and take no thought for the future. And then he says, as we make different decisions, we should always be asking, where will this lead? And I think that that ties into another doctrine of the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is the plan of salvation. So we have the plan of salvation and then a, and then a principle for us to act on a framework is what decisions are we making today and where will those decisions lead us? Or and I think that see, how are we using our agency under that plan of salvation? We have been given agency and those decisions are an exercise of our agency. Amen. Yeah. yeah. And that agency is such an important, again, another important principle that's tied to the plan of salvation and frankly could be tied to the atonement of Jesus Christ. And, and that's one of the things for our listeners and those who are viewing here. I hope that you are, and Elaine and I are going to continue to do this with you and we'll, we'll do it as long as we can and just keep saying, let's learn the difference between a doctrine and a principle and an application and a, and a policy and a procedure and history and rules. Because as we learn this together, we make decisions based upon doctrines that don't change and principles that don't change. And so we know if we have the principles that are correct, we're making decisions based on those principles. And this principle, we'd say, where will this lead? That, that's a principle. Where will the decision, where will my agency lead? And every time we use our agency, there is a consequence. And so we know, as Elder, as President Nelson was just teaching us, it, it's going to tell us where we're going to be in the next life, what kind of body we have, and where we, who we're going to be with. And this talk, this talk by Elder Godoy and also this talk by Elder Danes talk about that principle of agency right and left. In oh. fact, this, this talk by Elder Godoy, I, I'm going to just share one more thing from this talk and then we can go to the other one. But I, again, to the other one. But boy, he's not, he's not messing around in this talk. Oh, no. Oh, no. no. He, frankly, kind of surprisingly not messing around. He, he just says... You know, we don't need lukewarm members of the church. And he's not, he's not saying we don't love you. He's just saying we need you. We need to be not lukewarm, but we need to be all in. And then he says, is it worth risking your children? Let, let's see. The parent, this is number 23. He says, the parents may remain active, talking about us sometimes becoming lukewarm. But he says, but the risk of losing their children is high in this life and in eternity. It just that just that reality that the decisions that we make really do influence not only our life but future generations and then he says um don't be the weak link in this beautiful chain of faith you started or your or you received as a legacy be the strong one it is your turn to do it and the lord can help you and i love again elaine I love that he, he's ending his talk not saying you can do this by yourself, you can work really hard, but he says, don't be the weak link, the Lord can help you. And it's just the beauty, we have to turn to the Lord, he heals, he saves, and he strengthens in this talk. It's, it's us turning to the Lord and understanding that we genuinely do rely on him and it is only through him that we can save ourselves and our families. He's the one who saves them. We just have to stay on that path. It's and absolutely back. true. Yeah, yeah. You know, too, uh, echoes, echoes of former talks because the weak link, President Hinckley talked about that. Don't be the weak link in this chain of generations. And uh, this morning, again, I was, walk I was walking by a beautiful pond on a golf course, and I actually stopped. I found a golf ball, and I threw the golf ball in the pond because the pond was just so still. Yeah. And then I watched the ripples just go out in, you know, in circles and circles. And I was listening to the talk and thought, those are our decisions. Those are our choices. They don't just affect our lives. They will affect generations. And we do have to be the strong link. And we do have to kind of hang in there because it's really, it's really critical. 
it is, it, it, you know, I, again, back in Brazil, I've been surprised at how we've ta- I, I went to the first chapel that was built in Brazil, in, in Curitiba. And I just thought, you know, these people that were sharing the gospel, President Faust, one of the early missionaries in Brazil, and those at that time were just simply trying to find people to share the gospel with, just, just trying to learn Portuguese, just trying to do their basics. Little did they know that in less than 100 years, they would have, what, 36 missions? I can't remember how many missions, but so many, I think it's 30 missions temples are being announced every general conference now in brazil stakes all over this country i mean the membership of the church is so huge and here it is one person making a right choice influencing thousands and thousands of people here in brazil one person elder faust and his you know i think there were three, four missionaries called at the same time and this just this immense and now we have every individual person in brazil now making a choice and every person in the united states and every person all over the world one person does make a difference. It's that ripple effect, and we can be the strong chain. I mean, it, it's amazing how much one person can really influence the world. It's true. I believe, you, you, you've heard me say this, I believe one virtuous young woman, and we're all young women at heart, uh, led by the Spirit, can change the world. Yeah, amen. Elaine, a couple of comments that are coming from, from the group here. I just want to share a couple really quick. One person said, the pen is a lightning rod to the spirit. Oh, I just think that's so Thank you for writing that. That's a great way of saying it. You know, Elder Scott talks about how when you have a pen and paper ready, you're showing the Lord you're ready to learn. And so I think, you know, it is, it's a lightning rod to the spirit. So this is a great insight. And then we have somebody else asking, so is agency a principle or a doctrine, etc.?" And a reminder, and again, we, we would encourage anybody to read Elder Bednar's book, um, Increase in Learning, because he really does explain that, that sometimes you could talk about a doctrine or principle, and it can be both, depending on the question you're asking. So if it's a question of why, it's going to be the doctrine. If it's a question of what, it's going to be that principle. And so sometimes we really try to separate them, which we need to be, we, we're trying to work on doing that, but also remember that it's a framework. And so the question is for you to really be thinking through as you are listening and as Elaine and I are talking, to pay the price to figure out, is this a doctrine, is this a principle, and is this an application? And to really be able to study that and do that. We'll continue to talk about how we determine that as we go on, but we do really strongly challenge you to get Elder Bednar's book. I think he explains it so well in there and just look at how he explains a principle, a doctrine, and an application, and then really study so that you are practicing so much of determining this is through you practicing and thinking through a general conference talk or thinking through the scriptures. In fact, Elaine, I thought we were, we're not going to do this today, but I thought maybe in the future it would be nice to take a general conference talk where you can see kind of my notes here. This is me on the airplane and things. But where I actually have it drawn out, this is the principle, this is an application, this is a doctrine, this is the story, this is, this is the context. And so he actually is going, and you can actually go through his talk and say, this is the doctrine of the Godhead. This is an application. This is a principle, principle, principle. And you're going to find so many more principles because they tell them. Every speaker is going to do it differently. But it really is worth the price that we need to pay in order to figure this out. Elder, Elder Scott teaches that as well, Elaine. says, it is worth great effort to go through the stories to find the principles of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So he says, Take the, make the effort to actually learn how to do that. Absolutely. Uh, and, and again, we'll have to repeat uh, the doctrine so you can, it's a, it's a mind exercise. It's a different way of thinking and, and you have to develop a habit. And that's why studying these conference talks doing that will really help all of our minds to think in a different way, see things in a different way. It's helped me see things so much more clearly. Yeah. And I'm able to answer questions that are asked. And, uh, and so just hang in there with us. <laughs> Yep. And I think, Elaine, from time to time, we'll stop and say, this is a definition of a doctrine. This is a definition of a principle. This is a definition of application. So we continue to teach and learn from each other as we go on. Yes, absolutely. His cab ride was a definite application. Yes. Just, yes. Yeah. That was, so there you go. That was the application. And he's telling the story and the application of what he personally did in that experience. That's the application part, right? That's because it's how he handled it himself not how everybody else handle, handles it, but how he handles it, which is the beauty of applications. Is that's where, it, it, that's where judging, 
we, you know, we often talk about how we don't judge each other. We don't. In this case, we're just simply saying the spirit told Elder Godoy to do it this way. He may have told me to keep sleeping because I needed, I needed to sleep because I needed to take care of my family in the morning. I mean, it just depends on the situation. And that's why it's so important that the application is based on the individual or the timing that is being spoken by the Lord or through the spirit. Absolutely. And applications change. And uh, and just remember that because I think we live in the world of application. Yeah. And sometimes we get really hung up on something that is just, as you've just explained, applications are individual and they change. Yes. Just remember they change. And even they change in our own lives. Yes. Right? Yes. I mean, one, one day I may be told to focus on my education and the next day I may be told to focus on dating. <laughs> if you just... <laughs> You just follow the, but that's the application. But the principle is that I'm walking the covenant path, regardless of the application. And the doctrine could be the plan of salvation and my role in the plan of salvation again will be the application behind that. So that doctrine is going to answer the question of why. Why am I doing this? Because I am trying to live God again, have an eternal family. Principle is we need to walk the covenant path. In this case, the application is today I need to be in Brazil and speaking at a, a state conference. Right? I mean. So we kind of learn how to do this as we follow along. Absolutely, absolutely. What, what, what else would, we, would you like to share from Elder Dane's talk? Principles, doctrines, applications, what, do you, what would you like to share? Oh, uh, you know, I, I think Elder Dane's talk was absolutely phenomenal. And, and I'll, tell you, I'll tell you why, because the question, sir, we would like to see Jesus. Wouldn't all of us, wouldn't all of us, and then he talks about how you prepare to see Jesus. This is the Godhead. He gives us principles and applications for what we can do to see Jesus. Now, what I did, and this is, as I'm studying these talks, I'm kind of putting them all together, is I listened to Elder Haney's talk that he gave at BYU in the devotional just barely recently, where I can't remember the title of it. Maybe you can, Barb, but... It was, it was basically, okay, what do you do to see Jesus? You see him in the temple. You see him everywhere in the temple. Everything we do in the temple is about our Savior. You might be able to remember a little bit more, but that talk, when I get that in writing, I'm going to mark that up like nobody's business because it was so good. Oh, The two together are, promise me, everyone, promise me you'll listen to his talk. And then put these two together because they're they're just a phenomenal combination. Yeah, you you actually go to that talk. It's the the name of the talk is called um, just a second. I just looked it up. Meeting Jesus in the House of the Lord. Yeah. You just go to BYU Speeches, find that talk. I think I think. Let me see. Yeah, it's not ready to be downloaded yet, but you can listen to it and you can watch it. I mean, it is it is such a great talk. And I think to this point that you're talking about, it is. We go to the temple to find Jesus. And I, and I love in this talk again, if, sorry, we're having, I'm holding on to this here. If we, if we go, if we are trying to find Jesus, I love how in his talk, he talks about, again, these are, these are principles or applications depending on how you're doing it, right? So he talks about different ways that we can see Jesus. And he says, first of all, we need to learn to recognize him. Like we, we need to learn to recognize him. And I would say, one of the ways that I have learned to recognize Jesus, and he talks about it in here as well, is through the scriptures. President Eyring has a talk, and I, I apologize, I cannot remember the name of this talk, but I'll have to look. But he says, if you want to learn to recognize the voice of Jesus Christ, read the scriptures. Because especially the New Testament, and especially the Doctrine and Covenants is one that's often overlooked. Jesus is speaking over and over again in the Doctrine and Covenants. And if you want to learn to recognize his voice, read his words. Because when we read his words, it's just like our own journals. When we really are being us, we can start to recognize, oh, that's the way that Jesus Christ speaks. That's the way he explains himself. That's, those are the principles. Those are the doctrines. That, that's the truth that he speaks. And we start recognizing this is truth. And this is coming from the Savior. And so we can start, for me, for myself, I start recognizing, you know, this, this is coming from the Savior. This is his voice. And this makes sense to me. Because I've read this in the scriptures and I'm hearing the spirit, I'm feeling the spirit, and this is actually how Jesus Christ would teach this. So I think one of the ways that we find and can actually recognize Jesus Christ is by spending time in his writings, spending time in his revelations, spending time in his guidance. That's, that's one 
Absolutely. And didn't President Nelson, in, in one of the things, spiritual momentum, I believe, he talks about how do you get spiritual momentum, the study about Jesus Christ. And uh, I think it's really fascinating, and I wonder, I ask this question, uh, as, as those who were closest to the Savior walked with him, the, the men, the disciples on the road to Emmaus, Mary at the tomb, you know, they didn't, even though they were close, they didn't recognize that he was right there with them. And I, I just wonder, I ask myself the question, how, how many times do I not see his face? How many times do I not recognize him and that he's right there with me because I've made covenants? He's right there with me, walking with me. And so those scriptures, uh, those stories in the scriptures just came alive. And he referred to those here in his talk about how many times do we miss his face yeah. because we aren't paying attention. I, I love number 22. For those of you, again, if you... We say this all the time, but if anybody doesn't know where we are reading these from, on, on my Instagram account, somehow we've got to still figure out Elaine's, but on my Instagram account, Elaine, I don't know if we have them on yours or not. I guess we need to get, when I get home from Brazil, we'll make sure that you have them on your account. We have a lot of work to do on me. We sure do. <laughs> and me too. But, but you can go to the actual general conference talks. We've numbered them all so that we, when we talk about it, you can just find it quickly. But on this one, he says, this is number 22 in his talk. He says, open the gospel at random. On almost every page, we see him caring for people who suffer, socially, spiritually, and physically. He touches people considered polluted and unclean and feeds the hungry. And then he just says, what is your favorite story of Jesus? I mean, such a, such a beautiful reminder of us to get to know him. I just want to share something that Elder, Elder Christofferson shared with us in Brazil last week. Elaine and Elaine and to everyone else who's listening, it was so beautiful. He talked about a woman who has started a a fund to raise money for a for a, a, I don't know what it was a, an organization in India, and the organization was for people with leprosy. And he showed us a picture which just it's it's just in my heart now in my mind where Elder Christopherson himself was was washing the feet of an individual who had leprosy and peeling off the skin and cleaning the feet of these people. I mean, it was the most beautiful example of an apostle of Jesus Christ. So often in general conference, we see these men and women speaking, but we don't see them acting in the role that they are often acting in. In this case, it was just so beautiful. He was just there in his, short, in his, his shirt and his pants among all a, a, lepre, a leprosy colony, a leper colony, and he and his wife were washing the feet. They had a little, a little pan, and then they had all these people that were just lined up and just sitting there waiting for their feet and their skin to be cleaned by this apostle. It was the most beautiful picture. And for him, it was just something simple. He just kind of went on, you know, he went there and then he went to the next slide, but it has been etched in my heart and my mind. And this is Jesus Christ. This is, what his, this is what he was doing. He was serving, he was washing feet. He was alleviating this, the suffering of all people regardless of where they were. And that's, that's for us part of seeing Christ. You know, one of the things that really, an application that I have from this, and everyone listening, is when he's talking about how he, when he's trying to find, his, find Christ, and he said he talked about his mother, and he said that she, he saw his mother as one who must be obeyed. <laughs> And although he, although he's saying, you know, I wish I would have seen her differently, I also thought as a mom, I, sometimes I need to be different. I need to not always be the one who must be obeyed. You know, I need to be the savior. I need to be the one who is healing feet or healing hearts and healing, and healing spirituality, healing the physical, and not just having rules and not just telling my children what to do all the time, but being Christ-like with my own daughters, my own family, my own husband, and really acting as Christ would so people can recognize his face in me. Absolutely. So, I need to uh. that, that. So that for me, that's an application. I need to help others see Christ in me when they see me to see him. I agree. And he mentions again what we've been talking about. He says in uh, one of the paragraphs, I don't have my numbered yet, but I will. Try writing down every time he praises or heals or eats with an outsider, and you will run low on ink before you leave Luke. So he's talking about the Savior. I love that because wouldn't it be neat if, 
we tried writing down about ourselves or about our spouse or about our neighbor every time and we would run low on ink wouldn't that be neat oh absolutely that's number 24 for those of you who have that and then he, and then he saw this he says this in the next paragraph elaine which is so good he says as i saw this my heart leapt leapt in loving recognition and i began to feel that he might love me i mean when we start recognizing jesus christ's love for other people then we see oh this isn't just for everyone else. He really does feel this way about me. And, and, and I, I just love that he quotes President Nelson. He says, the more you learn about the Savior, the easier it will be to trust in his mercy and his infinite love. And then he says, and the more you will trust and love your heavenly father. And then he quotes Elder Holland where he says, um, Jesus came to show us who and what our God, sorry, who and what God our eternal father is like and how completely devoted he is to his children in every age and nation. So, so to me, again, if you want to throw this out, this is a doctrine and a principle. The doctrine is the Godhead there. And then the principle is he's showing us what we, what, what we need to be doing. He's setting the example. And then the implication for that is then we need to know what we need to do. And we need to decide what we personally need to do in order to be like Jesus Christ. And and what we need to do to be able to see his face yes you know he says uh he says that he will reveal himself to us and, I, and as you said barbara i think he does that more than we realize i think we can see his face in other people's faces in other people's eyes i think we can be you know uh, a part of that and let others see him through what we do and how we treat people and I do think as we, the answer is Jesus. Yep. Isn't, isn't that President Nelson? Yep. The answer is Jesus. And I really do think as we draw closer to him and it's happening, it's happening. I felt it yesterday. I felt it multiple times in a different way than I ever have before. As we draw close to him, we will, we will fill the world with light because we, he is the light. And we, his light will go into us and, and, and we'll fill the world with light. And that's what we need to do. And Elaine, don't you feel like you, this, this, I, I hope this doesn't sound like a prideful question, but don't you feel closer to Christ when you do serve Christ or when you serve his children? I mean, doesn't it just, just fill you with, with his love and help you recognize who he is when you're on his errand? Well, you know, I, I, President Irene gave a talk once. In fact, it was a talk he gave when I was called to be, I think it was when I was called to be the Young Women General President. And he said something to the effect, I thought he was speaking directly to me. He said something, your hands will become his hands. Your eyes will be his eyes. Just the way you speak will, you know, teach people about our Savior. And so I do believe that as we act in callings, but as we serve one another, as we do what he would do, yeah. that can happen. So, yeah. Yeah, that's, a, that's another, it's a President Packer quote as well in teaching, where he says, in teaching, if we are teaching as a savior would, he becomes us and we become him in the classroom. That's a, that's a pretty high responsibility. But at the same time, I don't think it's just the classroom, like you've said, I think it's in the home, it's anywhere we're representing Jesus Christ. Elaine, somebody in here says, my favorite Elaine Dalton quote is, if you want to be more beautiful, get more of the spirit. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? It's true. It's true. It is. <laughs> it is. Elaine, there's another point in here that I love. Um, it's, it's on, for those of you who have downloaded this, it's number 30. He says this, when prophets and apostles talk of covenants, so this is near the end of the talk if you don't have it numbered, they aren't like coaches yelling out from red velvet bleachers telling us to try harder. They want us to see our covenants are fundamentally about relationships and can be a cure for spiritual blindness. They are not rules to earn his love. He already loves you perfectly. Our challenge is to understand and shape our life to that love. I just wanted to throw this out. I, you know, I heard recently somebody say how, how amazed that they were when they realized that they didn't need to earn God's love. And, and I, I can honestly say, and this is, this is me speaking, and I think it's because I did have parents that just loved me no matter what I did. And I did some very stupid things growing up. I never felt like I had to earn God's love because I never felt like I had to earn my parents' love. 
And I never felt like I had to learn my, earn my husband's love. We, we don't earn love from God. God loves us because he is our father. Our heavenly parents love us because they are our parents. We don't have to earn it. It doesn't matter how righteous we are or how wicked we are. They love us because they are our parents and they are perfect and they love. And so I, for anybody who may be struggling and trying to think that somehow you have to earn God's love or you have to earn somebody's love, I hope we know that love isn't earned. Love is given because of, it's a, from God, he's a perfect person. We can learn to love better other people, but we don't earn God's love. It's a perfect love given to all people, no matter what, no matter who they are, no matter where they are, no matter what they've done. God never, this, this love is from him, not earned. Okay, that, that's profound, Barbara, and it's absolutely true. And I think we, we pull ourselves away from the Savior when we start thinking like that. I think we, we, we d depart from that, uh, that path that, that leads us to him. And we can't, we just can't allow ourselves to do that. Yeah. One of the other things in that that you just read that I absolutely love is our covenants are fundamentally about relationships. Yes. This is all about relationships. Even the three degrees of glory. You can choose what kind of relationships you want to have with your family and with the Savior and with God. And you can choose. And, and we've got to study that sometime too because this really... This life really is all about those relationships. And I think beside, I just want to have a closer and closer relationship with the Savior so that when he walks with me, I know he's there. I know absolutely he's there. You know, I can't, I can't agree more. One of the things that I teach in my eternal family class, my, my BYU students, is the, the more obedient and the more righteous and the more trusting you are as a person, the more you keep your covenants, I probably shouldn't say this this way, but I'm just going to say it. The sexier you are, the more attractive you are. I know, I, I just said it. But, but we want to be with people. We, we, we are attracted to people that we know we can trust. We're attracted to people that we know are selfless. We are attracted to people we know that are like Christ. And and, you know, the, the media and, and TV and all these, you know, all these different ways may say that we're attractive when people are rebellious or attractive when people do, you know, when, when, they, when they break their... No, attraction, I don't want to be in a relationship with somebody who, is, who I can't trust. And, and that, I believe, this relationship part, that is why the relationship, one of the reasons why the relationship of eternal life, the relationship of exaltation is that we are eternally with the people we love, we are eternally with our Father in heaven, our heavenly parents. We are eternally with those people because we can trust them completely. They have become perfected because they're trying to become like Jesus Christ. And so the, the, the better we are in following Jesus Christ, our relationship is built with him. He trusts us. We trust him. The love doesn't necessarily change in that, but the trust level and, and the ability to have that eternal relationship is built because we are putting everything on the altar everything and becoming more like Christ. That is attractive. Absolutely. And that's the scripture. There's a scripture. You know what it is. It's a relationship scripture. Light cleaveth to light and virtue loveth virtue. And it's, it's, you've just said that so beautifully, Barbara. I love you. I love you are so amazing. <laughs> you've taught this principle so well, Elaine, so many times. I mean, just the idea of the spirit the spirit gives you, you know, more beauty. And it's true. That's part of what this is. That's what we're talking about. We're, we are cleaving to that light. You, Elaine, you've taught that and lived that principle like no other. I mean, you've just, you've, you've been exemplifying that for so long. Oh, you're so sweet. You're so sweet. It does though. It's true. It's absolutely true. I know that that's the beauty secret of all time. Well, Elaine, maybe we're getting close here. I don't want to spend too too much time, and maybe we can end this. I'll I'll share a couple of thoughts, and I'll give you the last word today, if that's okay. So I love where in number thirty six, he just says, "Grab a pick and a shovel and join his team. Help carry his love to his children, and some of it will splash on you." I mean, that's kind of the idea is that we're talking about is as we're trying to serve and do God's will, that love will splash on us. That's a principle of the gospel as well. I also just want to share, this is not necessarily principle, but just something to note. In this talk by Elder Gaines, I 
I have noted, and this is the case in many general conference talks now, I hope you see, and I'm just gonna show you this, the footnotes. So it, there are, I mean, I've, as I printed off this page, these are all footnotes. And I strongly, these are still footnotes. I have three and a half pages of footnotes. The footnotes are actually longer than the talk itself. So I strongly recommend in your study, as we go through these weekly, to take some serious time and to study those footnotes that are being given by these leaders of the church. There are talks within talks within talks. President Nelson is amazing at using footnotes. So I challenge you as you do this, if you want some clarification, if you want to know context, if you want to understand the principles and the doctrine better, really look at these footnotes. These, these are so good. And these are, these are incredible quotes that he's taken. He likely didn't have time to share it, or he wanted to give a little bit more context. And so he just gives all these footnotes. Please study these footnotes as part of your studying. They, it, they are phenomenal. Scriptures, quotes, personal experiences, and some scholarly and academic uh, relationships and resources responses as well that are just so good well barb and there there, there there are people here making the comment that they've discovered that secret too and i'll just share with you a little secret sometimes when you write a general conference talk you write everything in your heart and then you realize it's only a 12 minute talk and you have and you've got like a 45 minute talk and you have to cut and i think uh i used to try but i wasn't successful all the time in putting what I had to cut in the footnotes. And I really think that the footnotes give you the complete thought or give you additional things. And you, you've discovered the secret. And, you know, I love to read President Nelson's footnotes. And this one, I was like, oh, he's got all these footnotes. And it's, it is. Jesus the Christ is the same way. If you've studied Jesus the Christ, yeah. Talmadge has all these footnotes that are just absolutely so rich in more knowledge about our Savior. So you've discovered the secret, and it looks like a whole bunch more people online have, have also discovered the secret. Yay. Okay. Elaine, I'm, I know I said I'd give you the last word. I'm just going to share one, and then I really am going to give you the last, because <laughs> I want to hear, you wouldn't mind, just your testimony of Christ today, because the youth have had a chance. I just want to share quickly. I know that Jesus Christ lives. I know that he is our savior. I know that he doesn't walk beside us. I know that he cares. I know that he heals. I know that because of him, I can repent. I know that I can feel peace in my life. I know that I can have power because it's his that he endows me with. And I know that as I continue to strive to become like him, he increases my ability to not only become like him, but help other people on that same path. I know Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world. He is my personal Savior, and I love him. And I say that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Barbara, all I can say to those words is amen. Absolutely. I feel exactly the same way. And uh, the answer, I'll just end by saying the answer is Jesus Christ. And I'm so grateful that a loving Heavenly Father loved us enough to send his beloved son to help make a way for us to be able to return back into our Father's presence, proven, pure, and sealed as eternal families. So I say that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank you. Dear sister Elaine Dalton, we love you. We oh, we love you. Love all of you. Thank you for being here with us. We'll continue to draw closer to the Savior as we learn to love each other more. So we'll so, continue next week at 9 o'clock on walk, Monday morning. Walk with him. Walk with him this week. Notice how close. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you all. Bye-bye.